This is uh, the annual report of the European Court of Auditors. It relates to the financial year 2018. So basically we give two things in the report. We give an opinion on the accounts, whether they represent the true and fair view of the assets and liabilities of, of the EU. And secondly, we give a second opinion on the legality and regularity of transactions. So in other words, whether the it, money has been spent in accordance with the rules. And this is where we come up with this error rate of 2.4% for 2018. And what does that mean? Uh, I mean, two point four six percent that's almost like four billion, which is an awful lot of money. I is it fraud? Is it corruption? What does an error mean? No, I would say an error is just basically where somebody doesn't comply with the rules. And these rules generally are in place for two main reasons. One is to protect uh, the integrity of the internal market. And the second one is to ensure that the, the money has been spent for the purposes for which the Council and the Parliament originally intended it. So that's an error. If we go to what fraud is, fraud is a deliberate uh, you know, intention to, to basically abuse the money, if you want to call it that. We only had nine such cases in 2018 of suspected fraud. So where our auditors are on the ground and they just have some suspicions that things are not right, they would report them, we would consider them, and then we forward them to the, the experts in fraud for the EU who are OLAF, a different body, who look into them in more detail. Because what we don't want to do is compromise any potential future investigation which might happen. But, but 4 billion still sounds like a lot. How, how significant is that error? Well, obviously, we would prefer to have error rate, which is much lower. I mean, error materiality threshold is 2%. So that's, I'm not saying we accept 2%, but that's the aim, to try and be below 2%. But what I'd like to say is, I mean, EU expenditure in 2018 was roughly 157 billion euros. So, OK, it's 300 euros roughly per EU citizen. And we say that there's an error rate of, uh, if you want to call it in quantifiable terms, 4 billion. But what I'd like to stress is that because there was an error doesn't necessarily mean that the project wasn't, uh, didn't have a positive impact and was a success. It's just that they didn't fully comply with the, the rules. I mean, we have, we have others which fully comply with, with, the, with the rules, but they don't deliver what was, was expected. And this is what we look at under a different uh, you know, field, where we look at performance um, audits, where we look at the actual... This, what we're talking about in the annual report, is mainly the financial and regularity audit, whereas performance audits are there to try and see whether the, you know, whether the objectives of different policies are being reached by, by the EU, basically. So I think that's, that's a very important element given the fact that we're in a, in a, in a, you know, in a situation where we have to try and uh, maximise the use of the funds that are available and it may become even more critical going forward given the potential uh, budgetary cuts because of the less members in the EU. So it's a relatively positive picture overall. What about from country to country? Are you able to say that one country is better than another? No, we, our, our objective is to give an opinion on the EU budget as a whole. Obviously true that we would visit some countries more than others because they are getting bigger percentages of the, of the EU funding, for instance, in cohesion fund. What I would say is that we find that particular types of expenditure are more prone to error. For instance, we have entitlement-based expenditure whereby it's based a research grant, for instance, it's very specific, or an Erasmus grant for a student. Uh, direct payments to farmers is based on a particular measurement. So whether a condition or is met. Where we have bigger problems is where it's a reimbursement payment based on costs in court. And as I was saying, it depends on the nature of the, of the expenditure for cohesion. These can very often be very, very complex, huge infrastructural projects, which cause problems in terms of state aid and public procurement so they they also lead to say differences of opinion and interpretation whereas other things are much more straightforward i would say we're now looking at the future of the budget for the the next funding period the european council will be just making hopefully some progress on that in the forthcoming council what changes would you like to see in the design of these programs to make them even more foolproof and in particular the european parliament has insisted that the rule of law become part of the, the, the EU's funding and their consideration. 
What does that mean from your perspective? Well, from our perspective, I would say, if I, if I stick first of all with uh, what we simply we could think could be done, I mean, we're all the time trying to make things easier for the final beneficiary because that's the biggest problem. As I said, it's about interpretation and the more complex the rules are, the more they're subject to interpretation and we often get uh, people complaining that they're so complex that it's actually not worth applying for EU funding. I mean, so we have to make it simpler. Or I, I shouldn't say not us, but the, the EU as a whole has to make these things simpler. So we have issues like simplified costs options you know as I say more entitlement based payments where it's not dependent on a cost reimbursement which causes a lot of problems in terms of the rule of law I mean we issued an opinion uh, last year on, on this uh, an opinion on the reg on the proposal that the Commission had made I mean from our point of view anything which would minimize the risk uh, you know of, of sound financial management or the you know proper use of the EU funds we're, we're in favor of that obviously we would encourage that in our opinion we basically said that you know that we, we the, the the new system is more structured say than before but nonetheless we thought that there was a couple of we or no proposals we thought needed to be more you know trashed out for instance we said that there needed to be more clear uh, you know criteria set out as to what actually constitutes such a, a breach of rule of law and its impact on on sound financial management and also how that would be what measures would be taken to address that by the, the, by the EU and also we thought a number of safeguards needed to, to, to be put in place for instance to protect the legitimate interests of a final beneficiary who is caught up in this whole thing and also from the member states point of view to respect the principles of, of pro proportionality and non-discrimination so I think we made some some suggestions on the proposal uh, we think they've taken on some of our recommendations but it's still an ongoing procedure as you know it has not been fully finalized so we just wait and see what happens